Well, my friends, we are gathered here together today to worship Almighty God. And so we give thanks to you, O God, for all the blessings of this life. And we pray for those who celebrate. We give thanks to you on this national holiday of Thanksgiving for all the things which we are thankful for deep in our hearts. We also lift up to you the cares of our heart the things which are on our minds. We know, O God, that whenever two or three gather together in prayer, then you are here. So be with us now. Amen. Well, our opening prayer today, our opening hymn, sorry, is called For the Fruit of All Creation. You're invited to just sit back and relax and listen to the, to the music. And uh, I'm supposed to tell you, you're not supposed to sing. I know, I know. This is one of the hardest parts about uh, joining in person. Um, Feel free to hum away, I think, you know, certainly in your mind as you go. And, uh, And let us listen then. For the fruit of all creation. Let us pray. O loving God, you created everything and called it good. You provided the harvest to sustain our every need. As we come together this day, help us to be thankful for all that you have given, our food, our homes, our friends, our families, our studies, our work, and all that challenges us to be better our rest, our leisure, and all that allows us to recreate. For all that we are and all that we have, especially the gift of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together then in the proclamation of the word. 
Our Bible reading today is a selection of verses about the resurrection of Jesus, thanksgiving, and harvest. Our first reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is about Easter and the resurrection of Jesus. In his letter to the Christians in Corinth, St. Paul described the resurrection of Jesus and Easter as, I passed on to you what I received, which is of the greatest importance, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised to life three days later. Our second reading is from Psalm 118. It reminds us to always thank God. The psalmist wrote about thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. You are our God and we give you thanks. We proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is is eternal. Our third, in our third reading, Jesus speaks about the real harvest. It is taken from Luke. Jesus sends his followers to spread the gospel and gather in the real harvest. After this, Jesus chose another 72 and sent them out two by two to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He said to them, there is a large harvest, but few workers to gather, to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in his harvest. Go, I am sending you to tell people the kingdom of God has come near to you. The 72 went to different towns and came back in great joy. Lord, they said, even the demons obeyed us when we gave them a command in your name. Jesus was filled with joy by the Holy Spirit and said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased to have it happen. Then Jesus turned to the disciples and said to them privately, How fortunate you are to see the things you see. I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but they could not, and to hear what you hear, but they did not. Holy Word, Holy Wisdom. Thanks be to God. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you, God, for birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. How many of you remember that particular prayer or poem? <clears throat> it's very appropriate today because, as John mentioned, we are bringing together Easter, Thanksgiving, and Harvest. The color on the altar today is white. It would be there at Easter, except this year we weren't here. It's also there on Thanksgiving. It's a symbol of celebration. Also in the front of the church today are flowers, multicolored symbols of the diversity and the beauty of God's creation. When we talked about bringing all three together, it occurred to me that the common theme of these three areas of life, Easter, Harvest, Thanksgiving, will be symbolized in the light. And so there are five candles in the front of the church. We are going to light all five in sequence 
and we're going to take ourselves on a journey from Easter, the first Easter, to today, to each of us, to show how the light of God came from that empty tomb and is now inside each of us. John is now going to light the Easter candle. On Good Friday, the tomb was dark. But on Easter Sunday, as we know it and call it, when the followers of Jesus came to the tomb, there was a light. That wasn't the first time the light was in the world. It was there at creation. It was there in the manger when Jesus was born. And when the gospel writers decided to write their gospels, the writer known as John put it this way, that there was a light. He called it the word God. And the light was so powerful that not even any darkness could extinguish the light of God. And that brings us to the next step and the next candle. And the next candle represents the world. A few days after the resurrection, Jesus went to a hillside near Jerusalem, and there he gathered with his followers. And before leaving this earth, he said to them, go into all the world and tell people about God, about the good news of God. God is love. God is light. And then he made them a promise. He said, no matter where you go, no matter what you face, I am with you always. The third candle symbolizes the church. When the followers of Jesus left that hillside, they branched out into all the cities, towns, villages around Jerusalem. And eventually they moved into the Mediterranean area, still pretty close. And as the small groups of people came together to talk about God and Jesus, they wondered what they should call themselves. About 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus, in Ephesus, a great city, the people who were gathered there one of the name. The word that they focused in on was ecclesia, a Greek word for people who come together for a special purpose. And they decided that God had called them together for a special purpose, to tell people about the love of God and the good news. And so they settled in Ephesus on the word church. In all the epistles of St. Paul in the New Testament, most begin to the church at. The fourth candle represents St. Christopher's. From Ephesus, the church branched out across the seas, down through the centuries, eventually to Canada, and came to Burlington. And sometime people got together in various venues, houses, schools, other buildings, and they decided that they too had come together for a special purpose. 
And so they called themselves a church. Maybe somebody in that group remembered the commission that was given to the followers of Jesus on that hillside to go and tell people about the goodness of God. They decided to choose a name for their gathering, and they called it Christopher, which means Christ-bearer. People who carry not just the name, but also the message and the love of God to all the people who come within their gathering. And this brings us to our fifth candle, which represents each of us individually and all those who cannot be here this morning for many reasons. And so John is now going to light that candle. From the tomb, to the hillside, to the various countries where the church went, to Burlington, to some time in your life, there was a moment when the light of God started the spark inside you, and that grew into a flame to remember that no matter what we go through in this life, the darkness can never extinguish the light and the love of God. Maybe you can remember that moment, or maybe more than one moment, and some of us may not remember any particular time, but the reason why we are here this morning, the reason why we gather in communities in other ways, is because somewhere inside of us, we still hear the echoes and the challenge from God to be God's person in God's world for God's purpose. About 300 years ago, a man by the name of Thomas Ken wrote what we call the doxology, based on Psalm 100. And he started his by saying, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'm going to end by changing some of the words, especially the first word, and replace praise with thanks. Thank God from whom all blessings flow. Thank God, all creatures, here, below, us. Thank God, above, ye heavenly hosts, those who have gone from us into eternity, into eternal life. Thank Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. In the beginning, when all was darkness and chaos, God said, let there be light. God sent Jesus as a human being. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when the chaos of our lives is most threatening and hope, is most bleak, God says, let there be light. Let us continue in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us faithful stewards of your bounty for the provision of our daily necessities and the relief of all who are in need. Ever-present God, hear our prayer. Please join me with hear our prayer. Lord of the church, 
Make us faithful stewards of our time, talents, and treasures. Teach us to use our grace-given gifts with generosity, compassion, and humility. Give a discerning spirit to our congregation as we continue our outreach ministries and meaningful worship. We continue our prayers for guidance as we desire a new rector to be among us, to lead us, and walk with us. Bless and guide those who have responsibility to lead us in the process to call a new priest. Ever-present God, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, help us share our bounties. Plant in us a willing desire to use the world's resources wisely. Make us careful stewards of the beauty and diversity of your creation. Give us clear eyes to see nature's beauty and wise minds to protect our home, this earth, from misuse and harm. Ever present God, hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, give us strength and courage to speak out against injustice. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our world, and ourselves. We pray for an end to the abyss between rich and poor in our communities, in our nation, and throughout the world. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the church in the province of Uganda. In the Niagara Diocese, we pray for the parish of Christ Church McNabb. Here at St. Christopher's, we pray for our clergy and staff who work together diligently during these pandemic times to provide us with care and support when there continue to be restrictions for our parishioners to meet in person. Ever-present God, hear our prayer. Lord of life, help us in our need. Restore the minds, bodies, and spirits of those who are sick and soothe those who despair. May our eyes be open to see human need and in that seeing, may we act justly with thoughtfulness and love. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all disease coronavirus, malaria, HIV and AIDS, and others that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all those who must travel. Comfort those who fear they will not be able to feed their families as they fear job loss as a result of COVID-19 business closures. May they have access to nutritious food and other services their families may require. Make us mindful that op our Open Doors outreach programs and Community Food Bank need our ongoing support and contributions. Ever-present God, hear our prayer. Lord of the resurrection, help us to rejoice in your promises. Gladden the hearts of those who grieve. For those who have departed this life and are in your love and care, ever present God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all your gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For our daily food and drink, we thank you, Lord. For our homes, families, and friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think, hearts to love, and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. Loving God, you created all people in your image. We thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives with ever-widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect 
and our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. I invite you to remain seated where you are and to share a gesture of peace with each other. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, God of life and love, because your abundant generosity provides us with all that we need. For this and more, we join with grateful people throughout time and space to praise you in the song of the angels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Above all, we thank you for the generous gift of yourself in Jesus, who came among us not to be served, but to serve. He taught us to see the beauty of the lilies of the field and to trust in your bounty. He fed us with loaves and fishes and showed us how there is enough for all. He embraced the outcast and the unlovely to show us the boundless extravagance of your love. And at the end, he left us with this meal of thanksgiving and sharing, a sign of your selfless generosity to be celebrated and enacted every time we gather in your name. On the night before he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and shared it, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine he gave you thanks and shared it, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this to remember me. Gracious God, through this meal we remember the death and resurrection of Jesus and recommit ourselves to follow his path to abundant life. Amen. Let us pray then, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God and they are for us the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
the Spirit of God, who is above all, and in all, and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence on earth, and the presence of Christ within you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.